Welcome to this meeting, Old Bridge Township Board of Education, uh, pursuant to bylaws and applicable laws of the state of New Jersey. Um, board operates its meetings consistent with the provisions of Robert's Rules of Order, which everybody knows I have. I need my uh, side to get more. Um, and so, um, both order is already um, For the board members, Pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10, 4-10 adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by advertising such notice in the Home News Review, the Board Office, the Schools, Cablevision, Channel 118, Verizon Files, Channel 24, and by filing such notice with the Township Park. Meeting is scheduled for today, Tuesday, February 11th. 2014, the board will take formal action on the payment of bills today, Tuesday, February 11, 2014. The Old Bridge Township Board of Education acknowledges that the law of the state establishes that members of the public, including members of the board, have the right to record public board meetings using audio or video recording devices, provided that the act of recording does not interfere with the business of the public board meeting. Therefore, the board makes it known that any such recording is to be considered a private recording of the individual and that no manner represents the official record of the board. The board therefore takes no responsibility for such private recording and completely disavows any future use. Um, at this time, we have added a new section to the agenda. Uh, we had discussed this at the board meeting, and this is about ethics. And uh, Mr. Weber kindly uh, agreed to read it. So we have a code of ethics that will now be on each agenda. I guess, that since it's the first time we're doing it. of the State Board of Education and court orders pertaining to schools. Desired changes shall be brought about only through legal and ethical procedures. In accordance with NJSA 18A, 12-24-1. Thank you. Okay, roll call. Now, Mr. Weber. Yes. Mr. Silly. Here. Prima. Here. John. Here. Hoffman. Here. Mongan. Here.
chips. Yeah. Got to be added to the recognition. Uh, uh, we can do that. We can do that then. We can do it in March after the recognition dinner. Just to acknowledge that we were there and who was in attendance. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, I have a report. On the report, I was going to talk about the district goals and tie, tie them into the progress towards goals and smart goals. Uh, it speaks about the uh, Chief of New Jersey and the teacher and uh, administrator evaluation process that's new to the District of Oldbridge and the State of New Jersey. I was going to have our assistant superintendent uh, schools, Dr. Kathy Hoker, give a report as to where we are thus far with that process, the number of observations that's been completed, and where we are with the mid year evaluation. Uh, and as people are checking with their SGO as well. Just as a point of information, in case you didn't hear, our New Jersey State Commissioner of Education resigned today. So, uh, just what I put that out there. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen now. Maybe in the helicopter flying over. I'm not quite sure. But, uh, okay. Um, correspondence, Mr. Mayor, do you know if we have any at this point? We do not. All right, special committee reports. I don't know if there's anyone who will have anything to report for next Tuesday. Um, I don't think so. Uh, well, I'll, I'll just make a mention of the finance committee coming up and where, where we're at at that time. Okay, thank uh, you. We are planning on just to let everybody know for later in the month with the public. Uh, I believe we're looking at February 27th, but I'll confirm that next week. Yeah, and also, uh, Either under the banner of strategic planning or long range planning, there should be a meeting on the 20th. Okay. Uh, Thursday, or one of those two will make a determination under which banner. Okay. We will have a curricular meeting, I believe, on the 24th. Good morning. Okay. Technology.
this again. I think it's a nice one. So, Mr. Dudley, if you, sure. could just, if you could just tell us about your two proposals and the issues of the underground storage tanks. Please. Okay. Um, you pretty much hit the nail on the head. Uh, I'm Dudley Warner. I work with French and Perillo Associates. I'm a licensed site remediation professional in the state of New Jersey. And um, we, we basically have um, old historic underground storage tank issues at the, the Cedar Ridge High School, the Jonas Salk Elementary School, the Carl Sandburg Middle School. Um, those three we've been working on for some time, and that was the first proposal that I gave to Mr. Mara. Uh, more recently, which came across, um, it's, it's called the Board of Education Transportation Facility. Um, that one is kind of new to us, so I'm just getting up, coming up to speed on that one. But uh, essentially, the tanks were pulled uh, back in the early 90s, and uh, in the state of New Jersey, you have to follow many different regulations and reporting requirements and soil testing requirements and groundwater testing requirements. And, and for whatever reason, the investigations were not carried through to the liking of the state DEP. So these cases are still open. We've been working on them. Um, we're trying to get them closed as quickly as possible so that you maintain full compliance with the DEP regulations and we can close the books on these, uh, get case closure, uh, which is now called the response action outcome, and basically get this off your plate and you can move on to more important things. Can you explain what the $49,575 fee is for for the three facilities, so Cedar Ridge, Salt, Sandberg? Yes. Those were the, um, originally we had uh, four schools given to us by uh, Mr. Mara. Um, uh, the, the first school, I can't, the name escapes me. Um, we were able to close that one out quickly because the state actually had a no further action letter, which we found once we started doing our um, um, investigation out with the Carpenter School. Uh, so then what happened is we went out and we did some investigative work at the other three schools, the, the high school, the Jonas Soft School, and the Carl Sandberg School. And the, the first two, Cedar Ridge High School and Jonas Soft, the investigations went they went well. The results we got back from our soil testing were favorable, which leads us to uh, the next step, which is to write the response action outcome. That for each school is a cost of $2,450. Uh, it's administrative, it's paperwork. Once we write the um, REO, those schools will be closed out and the DEP will stop bothering you on those two schools. Uh, unfortunately, at the Carl Sandburg Middle School, the results did not come back as favorable as the other two schools. And what is required is we have to go back there and actually dig up some of the soil that was put in the hole back, back in 1990. When they closed the excavation, they used, um, they used backfill, but when we tested it, it didn't meet the, the um, requirements of what the state calls clean soil today. So at the Carl Sandburg Middle School, um, we have to dig out the soil. We have to put back clean soil. We have to continue with some groundwater testing. We have to write a report and do a bunch of administrative things. And then uh, it all culminates once again, once we get favorable results back, uh, we write the response action outcome. The cost for Carl Sandberg is 44675 which brings the total to 49575 Does that include actually digging up the, the earth and sending it somewhere else? Yes. Okay, so that's all, so what is the goal over? Where that, everything is fixed at the Sandberg Middle School? Yes. And I think that with the Sandberg Middle School they're talking about is this, is the grade nine center. Yes, right yeah, exactly, right back there. The, the old location. This, yes. Cedar Ridge being this one? Cedar Ridge is this building. Yes, but that's, Cedar Ridge is okay. Cedar Ridge is okay. And it's the old Yo, uh, he, they, they were mostly num two. number four yeah. fuel oil. I have a couple of questions. Um, over these years, this is the early 90s, we're talking about like over 20 years, yes. has there been any exposure or any, any kind of potential harm to the students? No. No. Um, most of the areas are covered with pavement where the tanks were. I think all of them are, so there was no exposure. And no, the implication was that it wasn't reported correctly in the early 90s. Would have been a fault school district or the I don't know that it wasn't reported correctly. I wasn't here back then. Um, 
for some reason the the chain of closure didn't go to the end in the 90s. I don't know why. Mr. Mayor, do we have any indication who the contractor was back then? Because theoretically speaking, um, the chain of custody didn't occur correctly with the NFA. And if we paid for remediation of this work and we didn't get the results that we were supposed to the night before, I think we should be some recourse. Now, I'm not sure if there's any history, but this is just not a small project where it goes undocumented. The, the, it's my understanding that the contractor that did the work is bankrupt. Yeah, it was PMK. Yes, it's it's the contractor. Retired. And and back then, I'm not trying to say that the district didn't do its job, but wouldn't there be someone responsible with the school district to ensure that we obtain all the correct custody of the NFAs and all the information that went to EEP to give us correct closure? The, the simple answer is yes, but can I document? We cannot find any documents in-house relating to any of these transactions where, these, where the tanks were. So, in essence, this wouldn't be covered under any kind of no. insurance? The there's, insurance? There's no environmental insurance the district has to cover such? Not at, it, again, this happened in 1994, 1993. We had no environmental insurance. Do we have environmental insurance now? We have it now, but okay. we don't have, we didn't have it then. But our insurance wouldn't no. cover an unknown from back then? No, no, no. Really? Yeah, we already went that route with the first three cases, and the insurance company rejected it. It's not a name, though. What's that? It's not a name. I have a question. Yes. The contract to end or the administration were remiss in doing their reporting, let's assume that. <coughs> um, how, how did this notification process come? Did the state tell us after 23 years that we haven't done this? Yes. Yeah, the DEP, um, in, in May of 2012, the DEP kind of changed the way they clean up sites in the state. It's when they switched over to the LSRP program. And what that triggered is a lot of um, DEP correspondence that went out to underground storage tank owners, commercial properties, people with drum storage fills, you name it, who, and some of the cases go back, a lot of them go back to the 90s, some go back further. And it was basically the DEP saying, you know, you gotta do something. Your case is still open, you have to take care of it. And Frank, it was just the same case, the first case for the 19,975. Three weeks ago, we got a letter saying that we didn't do something in 1994. That's basically what we started. Now, the other question is, since it's not closed out now, we, we are now required to meet the updated standards? Correct. Okay, because, I mean, years ago, you could just fill the old tank at the end, you know, on a residential level, and right, that's all changed. So. Correct. Let me ask you a question concerning sampling. You said that uh, sure. over at the uh, Cole Sandberg Middle School, you went through a whole litany of sampling. Did you take uh, groundwater samples? Did the groundwater come back contaminated, or it's just the fill that you utilized to fill in the void when we pull the tanks out? What we did at Carl Sandberg was originally, um, our, it was just, it's called a site investigation. Mm -hmm. uh, we took soil samples as if as if we were just closing the tank. Obviously, it was just taken out years ago, but we had to kind of redo. We had to step, take a step back, right? Um, at that time, we took a groundwater sample. Um, the sample came back clean, but at that point, we didn't know that there was a problem with the historic fill, which is mostly a metals problem. I'm sorry, not with the historic fill, with the back fill. So we have to we have to do additional groundwater testing. So the groundwater came back as as good, and groundwater is at about 15 feet, 17 feet. In no, sh area? very shallow here. It's, it's very shallow. Two, three, four feet. So that's that's the preliminary results show that it's a it's a it's a good result. So well, but we weren't analyzing for what we found in the fill. Okay. Because so you analyze it just with petroleum-based products. Correct. Okay. Yeah, volatiles and semi-volatiles. Okay. So now, when you do a new test of the groundwater, you're going to be checking for metals and other contaminants that was in that in, yeah. in that fill. Correct. And and how much fill was disposed of there, or how much was utilized to off the top to of my head? That, that that void. Uh, you know, we took the uh, tank. I'm not sure the tank.